Today, I'm going to show you four things that work together to dramatically lower your blood sugar, improve sleep, and reduce cortisol, especially if you're over 40 and you feel like you're fighting against your body every single day. I'll show you four things that have the power to transform your life starting today. Number one, a mineral that most adults are deficient in, and that deficiency is directly linked to insulin resistance. Number two, an herb with one of the strongest bodies of clinical evidence for lowering stress and cortisol. Number three, a simple food timing strategy that reduces overnight blood sugar and cortisol surges. And four, a circadian rhythm anchor that helps your body finally get back into sync so sleek and blood sugar stop fighting you. This is not about extremes. It's not about fasting longer or cutting more carbs. It's about fixing the physiology that quietly drives poor sleep and stubborn blood sugar, even when you're trying to do everything right. Most people are taught to think about insulin resistance as a food problem, but physiologically, it's also a stress and circadian rhythm problem. When cortisol, your stress hormone, stays elevated, especially in the evening and overnight, it does three things that directly worsens blood sugar control. Number one, it signals to the liver to release more glucose into the bloodstream. Number two, it interferes with insulin signaling at the cellular level making it harder for your cells to clear glucose from the bloodstream. And three, it fragments deep sleep, which is when insulin sensitivity normally improves. Yes, waking up constantly in the middle of the night affects your insulin sensitivity and hence your blood sugar levels the next day. So you end up in a frustrating loop. Poor sleep leading to higher cortisol. Higher cortisol driving blood sugar through the roof. Higher blood sugar leading to worse insulin resistance. And worse insulin resistance leading to even poorer sleep. This is clearly not a motivation issue or a lack of discipline. This is simply a biology issue that has a fix. Solution is not doing more. It's restoring balance. So let's start with magnesium. Magnesium is a mineral involved in over 300 enzymatic reactions, including many that directly regulate insular receptor activity, glucose transport into cells, nervous system excitability, muscle relaxation, sleep architecture, and magnesium deficiency is extremely common, especially in people under chronic stress, with poor sleep, or with metabolic dysfunction like elevated blood sugar. In fact, in people with type 2 diabetes, magnesium is lost more rapidly through the urine. This creates a vicious cycle. Low magnesium worsens insulin resistance, and worsening insulin resistance leads to further magnesium loss. And then to make things worse, a large portion of adults in the U.S. are not meeting recommended magnesium intake. Some some studies suggest that up to 80% of adults consume less than optimal amounts, often without even realizing it. Large population studies consistently show that lower magnesium intake is associated with higher insulin resistance and a higher risk of type 2 diabetes. And this isn't just a theory. When researchers looked at data from over half a million people followed over many years, they found something very consistent. The more magnesium people consumed in their diet, the lower their risk was of developing type 2 diabetes. And this relationship followed a dose response pattern, meaning higher magnesium intake was associated with a lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes across the population. This tells us that this isn't an all or nothing effect. Magnesium supports insulin sensitivity in a dose dependent biological way. In randomized clinical trials, when people are actually given magnesium, researchers see improvements in fasting glucose, fasting insulin, and whole IR, which is a measurement of insulin resistance. That's pretty significant because it means the body is becoming more insulin sensitive. Less insulin is needed to do the same job and glucose is handled more efficiently. In other words, magnesium helps fix the communication problem between insulin and the cell, which is the core issue in insulin resistance, especially in people who started deficient, which as you know now, over 80% of Americans are not consuming enough through their diets. Mechanistically, magnesium is required for insulin to properly activate its receptor and move glucose into cells. Think of insulin like a key, right? So magnesium is what allows that key to turn smoothly, basically. So when magnesium is low, insulin has a harder job opening your cell's doors. So glucose cannot go inside and instead it lingers in your bloodstream for longer. Now, for those of you who have trouble sleeping, magnesium also acts as a natural nervous system stabilizer. It helps regulate excitatory signaling in the brain and it supports GABA, which is your brain's primary calming neurotransmitter. This matters because a calmer nervous system leads to lower nighttime cortisol. It leads to less liver 
glucose dumping, deeper, more restorative sleep. And this is exactly why the form of magnesium matters. If the goal is to calm the nervous system down, lower nighttime cortisol, and support deeper sleep, not all magnesium will do that equally. Magnesium glycinate is magnesium bound to glycine, which is an amino acid with calming properties. So compared to other forms, magnesium glycinate is highly absorbable. It's going to be very gentle on digestion, and it's particularly supportive for sleep, which means more of it actually reaches the nervous system where magnesium is able to do its most important work. And this is why magnesium can be so helpful for both sleep and blood sugar. Not because it sedates you, but because it helps the nervous system shift out of a stress state at night. When the nervous system calms, cortisol comes down. And when cortisol comes down, the liver releases less glucose overnight. And when that happens, sleep becomes deeper and fasting blood sugar becomes more stable. For most adults, we recommend around 275 milligrams of elemental magnesium, taken about one hour before bed. That tiny gives your body enough time to absorb it and start shifting into a more relaxed, sleep-ready state. And if you're wondering what I personally use as a dietitian who deeply cares about both sleep quality and blood sugar control, I'll leave a link below the video to the magnesium glycinate I take myself. Not because it's magic, but because it's a form that's very well absorbed, gentle, and actually supports the physiology we're talking about here. Now let's talk about the herb that directly targets one of the most overlooked drivers of insulin resistance, chronic stress and elevated cortisol. Ashwagandha is classified as an adaptogen, meaning it helps the body normalize its stress response, not blend it or force sedation. That distinction matters because we don't want to shut down cortisol entirely. We want to restore a healthy rhythm. Ashwagandha is a traditional herb that's been used for centuries in India's Ayurvedic medicine, and it's also one of the most clinically studied herbs for stress and cortisol, with multiple randomized double double-blind placebo-controlled trials behind it. In a landmark randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial published in the Indian Journal of Physiological Medicine, adults with chronic stress were given a standardized ashwagandha extract for 60 days. The results were striking. Cortisol levels dropped by 27%. Perceived stress scores fell significantly. Anxiety symptoms improved. Sleep quality improved. And overall well-being increased. Another randomized control trial published in medicine replicated these findings showing significant reductions in serum cortisol, improvements in sleep efficiency, and reductions in stress-related fatigue. Across trials, the pattern is consistent. Ashwagandha lowers brutal by roughly 20 to 30 percent in stress individuals without sedation or dependency. Cortisol strongly influences blood sugar because it directly signals the liver to release glucose, especially overnight. So when cortisol comes down, nighttime glucose output from the liver comes down with it. This is why many people notice better fasting blood glucose, fewer 2 to 4 a.m. awakenings, better morning energy, even without changing your food. Ashwagandha doesn't push insulin or force blood sugar down. It works upstream by reducing stress signaling that interferes with insulin's job. And as you learned today, chronic stress keeps cortisol elevated, and elevated cortisol tells the liver to keep releasing glucose and makes cells less responsive to insulin. So when stress signally comes down, sleep improves, cortisol normalizes, insulin sensitivity improves the following day. And that's why lowering stress isn't just about feeling calmer. It directly affects how your body handles sugar. Now here's where the magic happens. Magnesium and ashwagandha work better together. Magnesium supports the foundational physiology, insulin signaling inside the cell, nervous system stability, deeper, more restorative sleep, while ashwagandha addresses the stress signal itself. It helps lower cortisol, it reduces stress reactivity, blunts nighttime glucose release from the liver, and together they create the conditions your metabolism needs to function the way it's designed to. So if you're someone who's chronically stressed, ashwagandha is for you. We recommend taking about 655 milligrams about one hour before bed alongside magnesium glycinate. That timing supports the natural evening downshift, lowering stress, signaling, calming the nervous system, and setting the stage for deeper sleep and better 
overnight glucose control. The one I recommend is third-party tested for purity and potency, and it includes black pepper extract to enhance absorption, which matters because you only get the benefit of ashwagandha if your body can actually absorb it and use it. So I'll leave the link to the exact ashwagandha below this video so you can see it for yourself. No pressure, just an option if you want something that's clinically dosed, well-tested, and aligned with everything we just talked about. Now here's a food timing strategy that many people miss. If you've spent years cutting carbs of skipping dinner or consistently going to bed under fueled, that alone can keep your stress system more active at night. From a physiological standpoint, the body interprets low energy availability, especially low glycogen, as a stress signal. And when the body senses stress, cortisol rises. And human research shows that energy availability and carbohydrate intake influence that stress response, particularly compared to low-carb or energy-deprived states. This doesn't mean that carbs sedate cortisol. It means that they help remove the signal of energy scarcity that drives cortisol higher. Carbohydrates also play a well-established role in sleep biology. They increase the availability of tryptophan in the brain, which supports serotonin production. And serotonin is the direct precursor to melatonin, your primary sleep hormone. Because of this, controlled human studies consistently show that the type and timing of carbohydrate intake can influence sleep onset and sleep quality, especially when carbohydrates are not excessive and are paired with fiber. Fighter sleep in turn is associated with lower overnight stress signaling, more stable overnight glucose regulation, and improved insulin sensitivity the following day. This also helps to explain why extreme low-carb or chronic underfueling approaches often backfire long-term. They keep the nervous system in a low-grade stress state, even when calories are technically low. Now, this distinction matters. We're not talking about sugar binges. And we're not talking about refined carbs, especially right before bed. Refined carbs digest quickly, spike blood sugar, and can actually increase nighttime awakenings. What we're talking about are slow digesting fiber-rich carbohydrates, foods that release glucose gradually and signal safety to the nervous system rather than threat. And more importantly, these are extra foods added late night night. They can simply be part of a balanced dinner. Examples include lentils, beans, oats, quinoa, sweet potato, fruit that contains a lot of fiber. When these foods are eaten as a part of dinner alongside protein, they digest slowly, help replenish liver glycogen, and reduce the need for the liver to dump glucose overnight. This is why timing matters. For most people, finishing dinner around 6.30 to 7 p.m. gives the body enough time to digest, stabilize blood sugar, and transition into a parasympathetic sleep ready state without going to bed under fuels. That's the difference between supporting physiology and fighting it. If you want help putting this into practice, comment guide below and we'll send you our free guide with three meal plans designed to reverse insulin resistance. As a registered dietitian specializing in type 2 diabetes, I created these meal plans to help you eat confidently, support your metabolism, and work with your physiology, not against it. Finally, the most overlooked piece, your insulin sensitivity follows your circadian rhythm. And the strongest signal that sets that rhythm each day is light, specifically morning lights. Morning light exposure helps to anchor your internal clock. It lowers evening cortisol. It improves nighttime melatonin. And it improves insulin sensitivity earlier in the day. Human studies consistently show that when your circadian rhythm is off from late night light exposure or inconsistent sleep timing, your blood sugar control worsens even if your diet doesn't change. And the fix is surprisingly simple. Get 10 to 20 minutes of outdoor light within the first hour of waking. Get sunglasses if you can so the light actually reaches your eyes. And yes, cloudy days still work. This single habit helps set your internal clock for the day, making it easier for cortisol to come down at night, melatonin to rise, and insulin to work more effectively when it's supposed to. This tells your brain it's daytime. Be alert, which allows cortisol to peak earlier, melatonin to rise later, and your body to actually downshift at night when it's time to sleep. So how does this all fit together? This is not about one or two supplements. It's about stacking physiology in your favor. Magnesium improves insulin signaling and it helps calm the nervous system. Ashwagandha lowers cortisol. Evening fiber-rich carbs helps reduce nighttime stress signaling. And then morning light aligns your circadian rhythm. When these work together, sleep improves, 
cortisol normalizes, insulin sensitivity improves, and fasting glucose stabilizes. So how can you apply this simply? Well, in the evening, take 275 milligrams of Jade Supplements Magnesium Glycinate one hour before bed. I'll link it below this video. 655 milligrams of Jade Supplements Ashwagandha with Black Pepper one hour before bed. I'll also link below this video. And then a balanced dinner with fiber-rich carbs. And in the morning, light exposure for 10 to 15 minutes before you even look at your phone. Consistency matters more than perfection. This is physiology and physiology is adaptable. If you want help putting this all together, comment guide below and we'll send you our free resources with meal plans. If this helps things finally make sense, like this video, subscribe, and tell us what you want covered now. I'm Diana, and I'll see you in the next one.